Hey guys, welcome to The Zone. The Zone is the space here on AWOW TV where we're going to be talking about everything, everything that will grow your spiritual life, everything that you need to feed and build your spiritual life is what we're going to be talking about on the zone so you want to subscribe like this video share with all of your family and friends and engage in the comment section so we can both build our christian life together in this episode we're going to be talking about red flags in church yes in this current age where everyone is pretty much excited about the glitters in church everyone wants to belong to a camera worthy church a church where you can Pull out your phone, take pictures, and you're looking all pink and all beautiful. The music is creepy. The sermon is on spot. Your pastor is looking all dang, da -da dang, dang. Everyone is looking so beautiful. That is what's in vogue now. Everybody wants to run to those kind of church. I'm not judging anyone. I'm not seeing any type of church that I've described is bad. All I'm seeing is that. There are red flags you should look out when you are seeking for a spot to commune with Christians like you. Remember, the church is a hospital, so all of us in the church are sick people who are there to get better. The first red flag is a church whereby the church leaders are authoritative. Yes, if you've studied your Bible, there's no part of the New Testament when Jesus was always talking to people and preaching about this gospel, was he authoritative? Jesus, who has the blueprint of what we use today as Christians, was at no point authoritative. Some of you now want to quote the scripture where he chased people out of the temple. They were going against the law. They were doing something bad. So let us not bring that in here. But in every aspect of Christ's preaching, he preached with love. He preached with love. Love is the greatest commandment of all. So if you are in a church whereby the church leaders are authoritative, it's like a military zone for you guys. The pastor is coming. Everybody is running. Everybody is supposed to be on their toe. But he's scared. Oh, I can't talk to pastor. I can't talk to mom. On red flag number one. If the leaders are authoritative, run. They don't have the love of Christ. Number two point, if the church is transactional and not relational. If you go to a church whereby they say, you need to donate 200,000 Naira in order for God to bless you this week. Can we have five people that will come out to donate 200,000 Naira so that God can bless them at the end of the month? That's a transactional church. God is not a transactional God. And there's no way God told you, when you give me, I'll give you. Ask and ye shall receive. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. There's no way he put it in code that he said, when you are asking, bring something in exchange to ask and call it. He just wants our worship. He inhabits our praise. Let he that has bread praise the Lord. He just wants to eat your praise. He did not ask you for 200,000 naira. Neither did he ask you for 100,000 naira. Or did he ask you for 2,000 pounds or 20,000 pounds. So if your church is a transactional church, that they are convincing you that before you get the blessing of Christ, you need to exchange something for something. Run. That is not what God told us. When Christ was preaching where he shared bread and fish, at what point... Did you see the people give Christ something in exchange for the gospel? At what point in the Bible have you seen people give Christ something in exchange for the gospel? Now you want to quote Old Testament. I'm hearing you clearly inside your heart because you say Abel sacrificed animals to Christ. Abraham did the same. Jacob did the same. Isaac did the same. Those were sacrifices that God asked for. God wanted those sacrifices from Abraham. That's why he tested him on Isaac. He wanted that sacrifice. That's why Cain's sacrifice did not make sense to him. And he was like, he would not accept Cain's sacrifice. But you want to now say, oh, because they were given in the Old Testament. So my pastor said, if I don't give God 500,000, God is not going to bless for the end of the year. You are in a transactional church and you should carry your legs and you should run away now. The third red flag is a gimmicky church. I know that the world has advanced now. We have social media. We have the media taking 
the space in the world now the secular world is in front the media has expanded lights and music and sound everywhere in that quest to want to feel or sound cool some people are crossing the line some people are now beginning to go and allow the world influence the church instead of us being the light of the world so that our lights will so shine and the people will see and glorify god who is in heaven but now we want to replace our light with the light of the secular world which is not good these gimmicky churches measure the presence of God in their church by how many members they have, how many members they used to have before. They're so proud about it. It's something that they used to advertise. Oh, come to our church. We have 1,000 people, 1,000 sitters you want. I know the Great Commission is to go here into the world and make disciples. However, there are lines we should not be crossing. The problem with gimmicky church is that if they must entertain or entice you to get into their church, they have to keep entertaining and enticing you to stay back, else you'll find another gimmicky church and move. Even you, you're a gimmicky person because you are going for the light, for the flash, not for the substance, not for the word of God. You're going there because they've advertised how big their space is, what they can offer. Some of you go to church because you want to eat, just because of what food they are sharing in church. That's why you want to go to church. We pretty much need to look at these red flags when we're deciding on the community to fellowship with. Taking the number four spot is a church that lacks accountability. It's very important. I know that Christ can speak to a man of God and a man of God will stand there and be like, Christ spoke to me. I want to start a church. I want to tell people about Christ. Let's have followers. Then he starts from his house and then he moves and then he has a big space. That happens. And it's a dynamic that God has used over the years on many ministers. That being said, we need to have leaders that are accountable. You need to be in a church that the people that are guiding you are accountable the shepherds are accountable to somebody if the pastor will misuse church funds and church budget and there's nobody that can talk to the pastor ladies and gentlemen you are not supposed to be in that church because even you when you go astray there's nobody that's going to draw you back the church is not helping you build like i said the church is a hospital we're there to meet the doctors which are the shepherds, the deacons, the pastors that God has put in place in the church all together work as one body because the kingdom of God is our focus. If you are in a church whereby the pastor is not accountable, the deacons are not accountable, pastor's wife is not accountable, the ministers are not accountable, everybody is just doing what they like to do because there's nobody that's calling them to order. You are walking down a disastrous road and you should remove yourself immediately if you have watched this video up to this point i have not subscribed yet i pretty much don't know what to tell you right now you need to subscribe because in the zone on ayl tv we're going to be talking about different things and different ways at which we can help one another build our christian life the final red flag you should check out in churches if you are in the church already or you are planning to get a new church is a church that shows favoritism I know that some of you that are experiencing favoritism in your church will disagree with me. That's because the church loves you more than they love the other person. I've seen people leave churches because the pastor does not care about them. The pastor has his favorite. The pastor has this sister that he likes, this family that he likes to visit, this family that he likes to pray for, this family that he likes to call to the pulpit. It's as if every other person does not really matter. And most times they do it for members that are very, very rich. So it's as if those of us that are not rich in the church we really don't matter. If you're in a church where the pastor has favorites, run. I'm not saying that it's a bad thing for pastors to have people that are close to him, people that, you know, do the service of God efficiently, that are so hardworking, that the pastor can rely on. Yes, pastor can have this in a circle. But having favorites in the church and making the church feel like they are favorites and I like them and I don't like you back, it's a red flag that you should be running away. When Christ was on earth, Christ rode with everyone. Short Zacchaeus, Harlot woman, Nicodemus. He rode with every single person that was imperfect and perfect at that time. So if your church leaders have favorites, you need to be running that church. Don't call that your church because that's not a hospital that will help you build your Christian life. Pretty much, guys. If there are more red flags, put them in the comment section for someone there to see and shine their eyes and realize that they might be walking down the wrong road as they're trying to seek 
the face of God. This is The Zone on AWOW TV and my name is JM. We're pretty much going to be talking about so many things on this podcast show. So you want to subscribe and share this video with somebody. Like I said, leave a comment in the comment section if you have more red flags that you want people to shine their eyes and learn from. Because as a body of Christ, we are here to build everyone. Until next time, guys, God bless you.